Welcome again. Today we look at the effect of temperature on enzyme activity. As we look at this topic, it's important to consider two ways in which temperature affects the work of an enzyme. The first way applies to all reactions. For as temperature is increased, the energy of motion, the kinetic energy of the molecules increases, and the chance of substrates coming into contact with enzymes increases greatly because the random molecular motion increases. So there is a greater chance of the substrate bumping into the active site and forming the enzyme substrate complex and then ultimately the products. So an increase in molecular motion brought about by an increase in temperature is one way to increase the rate of a reaction. But because enzymes are unique molecules, they are globular proteins assembled from a range of amino acids joined together in a complex structure. And because enzymes are specific, each having a very unique active site made up by a very unique conformation of amino acids, as the rate of a reaction increases because of increased molecular motion, there is a balance or a compromise to be had because once temperature is increasing, then levels of energy and vibrations will increase. And these vibrations are not confined to the molecular level. In other words, it's not just molecules that vibrate and have a greater chance of coming into contact with each other but the bonds which hold these molecules together. Specifically, the bonds which hold the complex globular structure of the enzyme together. Those bonds are also going to be subjected to increased vibrational forces. And ultimately, they will reach their breaking point. So the maximum rate of an enzyme-catalyzed reaction depends upon a balance or a compromise between the increasing molecular motion caused by movements of molecules of substrate and enzyme and the denaturation of the enzyme that results from vibrational forces which once these forces become strong enough will ultimately lead to the breakage of bonds and the denaturation of the enzyme. With the denaturation of the enzyme the structure of its unique active site changes very much like in this model where the substrate can fit into the active site when the enzyme works but once the enzyme begins to denature because of the increased vibration and the breakage of bonds then the active site begins to change its conformation or its shape and the substrate, which would have a lot more energy of motion because of the higher temperature, would not be able to fit into the active site of the enzyme. And the enzyme itself would also be vibrating. But this increased vibrational energy for the molecules does not lead to an increase in the rate of the reaction. Because at this point, this very increase in energy has become so great that it has led to the denaturation of the enzyme or a change in the conformation of the active site. An excellent way to conceptualize all of this is with the help of this figure. And here you can see that denaturation is not something that suddenly begins at a certain temperature. But technically, an enzyme is always on its way towards denaturation. For as temperature increases, the energy of vibration of the bonds increases, getting to such a point where this vibration is strong enough to significantly denature the enzyme or change the conformation of its active site. And once this denaturation is significant to overpower the effect of the increased molecular motion, then that critical point comes where the enzyme works at its fastest. It's called the optimum temperature. 
and well before that optimum temperature, denaturation was happening. But the effect of denaturation was far less than the effect of the increased molecular motion. But ultimately, the point arises where the temperature is so great that denaturation is much more significant than the effect of the increased molecular motion. So enzymes typically have an optimum temperature at which they operate. And for enzymes in the human body, this temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. Here you can notice also an interesting fact about enzymes. At 10 degrees Celsius, the rate might be one unit. But at 20 degrees Celsius, the rate might be two units. At 30, a doubling again to four units. And then later on, this balancing point coming with the optimum temperature being acquired. So well before that optimum, many enzymes tend to double their rate for every 10 degrees Celsius rise in temperature. Or we can say that they have a Q10 of 2. And it's also important to realize that this diagram is not representative of all enzymes. A very good example of an enzyme that, that does not obey these dynamics is the enzyme TAC polymerase, which is used in polymerase chain reaction to make large quantities of DNA. This enzyme was isolated in the 1980s for the first time from the bacterium Thermus aquaticus, which is endemic to the hot springs of Yellowstone Park. So you would expect that in organisms that live in very high temperatures, their enzymes would not quite operate in this same way. And similarly, we can hypothesize that organisms that live in very cold temperatures would have enzymes that have an even different set of dynamics.